Hello, fellow sojourners and boo! Sorry to frighten you, but on today's episode, we're discussing Halloween. Should Christians celebrate Halloween? Where did Halloween come from? Is candy corn the official candy of hell? We'll tackle it all, so don on your ghoulish attire, decorate your house in cobwebs, and let's demand some candy from strangers. I'm Pastor Shane, I'll be your trick-or-treater today as we appropriate some culture. <laughs> Whenever we invoke moral language, we need to be clear what we're saying. And the statement, Christians should not celebrate Halloween, I think is clearly a moral directive. It is a statement about the moral permissibility of an action. And if it's morally impermissible, it is wrong, which is a gentler way of saying it is sin. But let's not be gentle. Let's be precise. When we say Christians should not celebrate Halloween, do we mean it is sinful to celebrate Halloween? That's a pretty bold statement, particularly because the Bible does not say anything whatsoever about Halloween. Of the holidays that are mentioned and commanded in the Bible, we don't celebrate those because they don't really apply to us. And the holidays that we do celebrate are neither commanded nor mentioned. Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's Eve, even Easter is not something that has been commanded to us. We remember and commemorate what Christ accomplished on the cross through communion, which is commanded and instituted by God for us. But all other holidays or celebrations are man-made cultural expressions. Nevertheless, many good Christians are uniquely and perhaps understandably troubled by the celebration of Halloween. So I found a video that I think articulates that point of view, which I'll address in our first head-to-head -head contest of men talking at a camera. Take it away! In this video, I'm going to be offering some reasons why I believe Christians should avoid this holiday. Number one, Halloween has pagan origins. According to an online post by NationalGeographic.com entitled Halloween, Costumes, History, Myths, and More, Halloween's origins date back more than 2,000 years. On what we consider November 1st, Europe's Celtic people celebrated their New Year's Day called Samhain. On Samhain Eve, what we know as Halloween, spirits were thought to walk the earth as they traveled to the afterlife. Fairies, demons, and other creatures were also said to be abroad, in addition to sacrificing animals to the gods and gathering around bonfires. Celts often wore costumes, probably animal skins, to confuse spirits, perhaps to avoid being possessed, according to the American Folklife Center at the U.S. Library of Congress. By wearing masks or blackening their faces, Celts also thought to have impersonated dead ancestors. True, there are certainly pagan origins and pagan practices that still endure in modern Halloween celebrations. But customs and practices are not static things and meaning changes in culture. Peace, or wait, is it V for victory? Winston Churchill was the one who popularized flashing the V for victory sign, which was later borrowed by other people, including Richard Nixon. But that sign was co-opted, or we might say appropriated, by the hippy-dippy crowd who were anti-war, and soon what once stood for victory suddenly became more closely associated with a sign of peace. Same sign, same practice, totally different meaning. It's not the same thing. We might do similar practices as pagans, but we're not doing it for the same reasons, and so it's not the same thing. In fact, the entire reason that we call it Halloween and not Samhain is because the Catholic Church co-opted or appropriated it. Take it away, History Channel. The Christian Church turned Samhain into All Saints Day, or All Hallows, in the 8th century. The night before became All Hallows Eve, later shortened to Halloween. You've heard of trick-or-treating on Halloween, but what about souling or guising? All three of these traditions originated in medieval Britain. On All Souls Day, November 2nd, the needy would beg for pastries known as soul cakes. In return, they would pray for people's dead relatives. This was called souling. In the medieval Halloween tradition of guising, young people would dress up in costume and accept food, wine, money, and other offerings in exchange for singing, reciting poetry, or telling jokes. 
In 19th century America, Irish and Scottish immigrants revived these old traditions. The result was trick-or-treating. At first, it was much more about the tricks, in the form of pranks and hijinks, than the treats. It wasn't until the 1950s that the custom took on its current family-friendly, kid-centered form. So the pagan celebration is not the same as the Catholic celebration, which is not the same as our modern celebration of Halloween, which is mostly secular, especially in Protestant circles. But if the problem with Halloween is that it borrows from pagan practices, well, then we got some bad news. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to say that all holidays, which have some pagan origins, are inappropriate for Christians. For example, both Easter and Christmas have some pagan trappings. So pagan origins or pagan trappings isn't a problem. Kind of goes against your first point, but let's hear the second point. Reason number two, Halloween has no Christian values. Well, most holidays are not intrinsically imbued with Christian values. Thanksgiving, I think, would be the most intrinsically Christian. Uh, but everything really depends on how you celebrate. St. Patrick's Day is meant to commemorate the ministry work of a man who advanced the gospel. That should be in alignment with Christian values. But it's most typically celebrated with drunkenness. So is St. Patrick's Day a holiday of Christian values or not? The Puritans were against celebrating Christmas because they saw it as nothing but debauchery. How we celebrate is more indicative of whether or not it aligns with Christian values. Does New Year's Eve have Christian values? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, what about Fourth of July? Is that gratitude for our country and appropriate honor where honor is due? Or is it just idolatry and jingoism? And the same, I think, could be said for Halloween. Is it a time that I use to commune with the devil? Well then, yeah, that's not great. Or is it a time that I spend having fun with my family, in community, with my neighbors? How we celebrate is more indicative of whether or not it aligns with Christian values. But let's hear the next objection. Halloween glorifies death. Halloween originated with a supernatural belief about spirits and death. And this is perpetuated during Halloween today. People dress up as ghosts and decorate their lawns as graveyards. And images of skulls, skeletons, and the undead are all prevalent during Halloween. And this theme is contrary to the Bible. The theme of Halloween is death, but the theme of the Bible is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The word glorifying is doing a lot of heavy lifting there. And I think Christians ought to be sensitive about context when it comes to this charge, uh, because Christians could easily be accused of glorifying death. We have respect and even a reverence for martyrs. We wear instruments of execution on our necks. We sing many, many songs about a particular death, along with many, many paintings and statues and movies, some of them gruesome, and even reenact this particular death. Are we glorifying death? Context matters. Uh, let's look at the image he gave us. When you see this, is your takeaway that death is wonderful and amazing and admirable and worthy of praise? I don't think so. I think it's more horrifying than glorifying. In fact, death is not the unifying theme of Halloween, which I'll address along with point five. Halloween is full of evil imagery. I already talked about how Halloween glorifies death, but beyond that, it's full of much more evil imagery. People dress up as witches, vampires, demons, zombies, and every other evil abomination you can think of. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22 says, Abstain from every form of evil. So Christians should not participate in this holiday. I'm not sure what evil imagery means, but I'm mostly perplexed by the operating principle here. Halloween is bad because it has evil imagery like people dressed up as witches. And then he shows me an image of a person dressed up like a witch. Halloween has evil imagery like graveyards. And then he shows me an image of a graveyard. In fact, in this video, he shows me an image of the evilest evil there is, which is Satan himself. So if seeing evil imagery is evil, then so is his video. 
But again, as we've argued, sin is not external. So if you personally have an issue with some of these more ghoulish costumes, you don't have to wear them. And we'll get to that more in a second. Uh, but I'm still not sold on this concept of evil imagery. So here's a picture of my house decorated for Halloween. I know, I'm a terrible Christian. Uh, but what do we see? Uh, spider webs and giant spiders? Are spider webs evil? No. Uh, are spiders evil? Even giant ones? No, they're God's creation. It's hard to see in the photo, but we also have rats and bats and skeletons and caution tape and a tombstone. Is a human skeleton evil? Are bats and rats and caution tape evil? No. What are they? They're scary. That's the unifying theme. Bats and rats and spiders are not evil, but people are scared of bats and rats and spiders. That's why death is featured, not because it's glorifying it, but because people are afraid of death. Graveyards and tombstones are not evil, but people are scared of death. And fear, in a controlled way, can be fun. Uh, that's why people go to haunted houses and watch scary movies and go on roller coasters. I don't think roller coasters are a celebration of evil. And there is something good about overcoming and facing fears. It might be trivial, it might be playful, but it's still practice. Those are real feelings and real sensations. And the practice of facing fear when it doesn't matter will help us when it does matter. Furthermore, the focus on death can be a means by which we come to grips with mortality, like Ash Wednesday. We're afraid of death, we don't like to talk about death in our culture, and some people act like they're immortal or never even give a second thought to their mortality. They really should. And if Halloween is a means by which we contemplate our mortality or forces us to question what happens to us when we die, all the better. That's an important question. See, how we celebrate is more indicative of whether or not it aligns with Christian values. But I want to circle back to that question of ghoulish costumes. Is there something wrong with dressing like a witch? Well, to answer that, I want to tell you a ghost story from the Bible. Uh, 1 Samuel. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in his own town of Ramah. Saul had expelled the mediums and spiritists from the land. So to be clear, Samuel is dead. But Saul sees the army of the Philistines, and so he goes to inquire of a witch, essentially. Saul then said to his attendants, Find me a woman who is a medium, so I may go and inquire of her. There is one in Endor, they said. So Saul disguised himself, putting on other clothes, and at night he and two men went to the woman. Consult a spirit for me, he said, and bring up for me the one I name. But the woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done. He has cut off the mediums and spiritists from the land. Why have you set a trap for my life to bring about my death? Saul swore to her by the Lord, As surely as the Lord lives, you will not be punished for this. Then the woman asked, Whom shall I bring up for you? Bring up Samuel, he said. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out at the top of her voice and said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Don't be afraid. What do you see? The woman said, I see a ghostly figure coming up out of the earth. What does he look like? He asked. An old man wearing a robe is coming up, she said. Then Saul knew it was Samuel, and he bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? I am in great distress, Saul said. The Philistines are fighting against me, and God has departed from me. He no longer answers me, either by prophets or by dreams, so I have called on you to tell me what to do. Samuel said, Why do you consult me, now that the Lord has departed from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done what he predicted through me. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to one of your neighbors, to David. Spooky. Now let's say we're making a movie or a play about David ascending to the throne, and we had this scene straight from the Bible. We would have to cast for the Witch of Endor. Someone would have to play the Witch of Endor. We would dress her up in a costume, maybe with a hat and a false nose, see if she floats. And she would pretend to be a witch. Is that evil? Is that sinful? I don't think so. Uh, putting on a costume and pretending to be a witch is not the same thing as being a witch or engaging in witchcraft. But like so much in Christianity, it comes down to the heart. Uh, there's no clear directive on this, and so you should follow your conscience. If Halloween bothers you, don't participate in it. If you don't like the ghoulish costumes or decorations, don't engage in them. 
be convinced in your own mind. We'll stop there. I have more to say on this in a broader way, but we're running long, so we'll stop here. Uh, if you have an objection or a counter argument, I'd love to hear it. You can reach out to me on the socials. Have a happy Halloween, and I'll see you next week for more Appropriate in the Culture.